Woof, what's going on? Don't mind me looking a little bit different. I'm just coming back from my function with Hanny. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just playing. But speaking of a function, have you ever been somewhere and you're like socializing at an event or something and then somebody approaches you or your friend group and for whatever reason, you're just pre-irritated because there's something about them that just, like already irritates you. Maybe it's their scraggly beard or saggy looking eyes or something. There's something about them that just, you already irritated at them before they've even approached you. What I'm gonna be talking about goes a little bit deeper than just looking at someone and feeling irritated. It could be something that you're held within, it could be something that you've habitually grown accustomed to when you shouldn't have. It could also be several different things, which I'm going to go over in this video, which is going to be going in depth about being pre-irritated. Why are you so irritated all the time, essentially? Let's go back to the scraggly man that has a beard and is looking like he's going to come up and approach you and ask you for a dime to buy a can of soda at the corner store. You're already kind of pre-irritated just looking at him. But why is this? Is it just simply because he looks like he's going to ask you for a favor? Is it because he's known around the community to be a nuisance? Is it because of your own intuition? What about people that are your coworkers? Somebody that you have to deal with on the daily? Are any one of your coworkers irritating to you? Are they annoying to you? Are they annoying to everybody else in your space? Does everybody else not ever enjoy them? Or is it only you? that doesn't enjoy them. I'm honestly surprised, but you would be surprised too if you really thought about this. And that annoying, irritating person that just gets under your skin is liked by a lot of other people. So is it really the person that's irritating or is it you that's pre-irritated for no reason? And if it is you, do you know how to figure it out? You figure it out by looking at the bigger picture and just taking a step back. Now we're not all compatible with everybody around us. Sometimes, I mean, that's how humans have evolved. We're not supposed to all be compatible on one encompassing umbrella. As cool as that would be, that would ruin a lot of diversity. So quite frankly, it is good that we're somewhat divided and have different ideas and ethics and everything, but that's a whole different issue. I just want to focus on being irritated at people. So if you're really irritated at someone, but you notice that they're friends or tolerated by a lot of other people, and you ask those other people and they say, oh yeah, he's actually a good guy. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Are you the bad guy? Honestly, if it's the former, they're good, and a lot of other people think that they're good, and you don't, it's probably a you issue. It's probably just you lacking the social skills and the social awareness to look past your primal irritation towards that person for whatever reason. Maybe they accidentally did something a couple months ago and you've just been irritated at them ever since. And that's not okay. You shouldn't be living your life irritated at minor inconveniences that other people do. Now there's always a valid reason for somebody being irritating. There's always going to be a valid reason why you don't like someone, but a lot of the time it might not be a valid reason. It might be for something small or inconvenient, or something that's not even relevant anymore. Okay, sure, sometimes there are people that just go around bugging other people for dimes all the time, and yes, those people are irritating. But think about the person that you're thinking about that you don't like, but other people like. It's probably just you. So where did this irritation root from? Well, it could root from social anxiety, it could root from just general anxiety, it could root from depression in a way, it could root from childhood experiences, from, you know, trauma, it could root from a lot of different things. There's no one-size-fits-all answer to why you might be walking around irritated at the world, but chances are it's probably you and an experience that you've had in the past, probably from your childhood, that you've grown accustomed to into your adulthood. And now that's just your baseline level is just always being irritated and irritable 
and nobody really wants to have you ever as a friend. Or if you do have friends, they're probably just people that you share a substance with. Like, maybe you all go out drinking on the weekends. Maybe you all sit around and smoke weed and vibe to music. You might also just naturally be defensive, again, because of anxiety or other issues. Or you could just be a naturally irritated, angry person. I, I can't say that. There are several ways that you can train yourself out of this habit. This habit of being defensive towards people, regardless of their intent. Maybe they have good intentions and you're just being defensive for no reason other than just being defensive. And that just makes you unapproachable and unlikable. There are ways that you can train yourself without being vulnerable. You can still be defensive and everything, but you don't have to make yourself vulnerable. You can still have very positive interactions with people that you're defensive towards without making yourself vulnerable to those people. I know that sounds like the perfect balance. It really does take a long time to get there. I understand that. But getting past this social anxiety, this defensive anxiety, this pre-irritated intent that you have all the time is such a huge hurdle. But it's going to benefit you in so many different ways. So let's get into the actual actionable steps that you could take to try and get over this pre-irritation. Back straight, fix your posture, fix your breathing, practice actually meditating, practice journaling, practice more exercise, getting outside more, and not just five minutes outside, I'm talking like an hour or two outside at the minimum. Also, you need to be eating healthier and drinking healthier. No more like soda pop. <laughs> No more high caffeine, high carbonated drinks. No more fast food from McDonald's and Arby's when they're having their special. No more coupons from Wendy's. These are all a whole umbrella of things that I'll probably cover in future videos. But overall, the main premise is that if you walk around in this world pre-irritated at everyone, it's not because everyone else is a bad person. It might actually just be because you are a bad person and your ego and your lizard brain is gonna convince you, no, it's not a me issue, it's an everybody else issue. But I'm telling you that the rest of the world doesn't care and the rest of the world doesn't owe you understanding. It's on you to fix you issues. Even if you don't want to think it's an issue, it probably is. And you'll be much better off if you get into the actionable steps of actually fixing your life. But probably the most important thing that you need to do when you're actually trying to change your pre-irritated state is that you need to avoid faking these changes. Do not fake your progress. I cannot stress this enough. If anything else, do not fake your progress. People can smell out fake people. When somebody's being fake, you have a little intuition in your brain that's kind of going off. Neurons are firing saying something doesn't seem right about this person. Other people can smell that from you too. People are so intelligent when it comes to identifying fake people. So don't fake your progress. Fake it till you make it. It works for like people that are faking it in like a celebrity status or something. I'm sure I could actually go into deeper dive in a future video, but Fake it till you make it is such a stupid concept for most people. Be genuine and authentic in your progress towards a better self. Don't fake your progress. It's gonna make your progress worse around other people, okay? And then another last thing that I just wanna go over really quick is not to cope about your progress. You know, don't write down one thing and say, okay, that's my gratitude journaling done for the day. Don't go out for five minutes and say, okay, I've been outside or touch grass to say, okay, I've touched grass, time to go back inside. Don't cope about the progress that you've been making. Don't convince yourself that you're making a lot more progress than you are. In order for these changes, in order for your life to change, in order for you to stop walking around defensive and pre-irritated and all this other thing, to walk around anxiety free, you need to be authentic with yourself about how your progress is with your change about how your progress is in your self-improvement. 
to be genuine and authentic to yourself about your progress and understand where you are and not have a bloated head about it is such a powerful tool to your own journey. Regardless of what your journey is, whether it's spiritual, mental, physical, financial, anything, genuine progress is so much better than cope progress. I really hope that this video helped you out. I love you, man. So take care of yourself, drink better, breathe better, eat better, and live better. I'll see you around.